Hi, I'm Katrin, an MD PhD student at Duke NUS. My first impression of Duke NUS was its strong translational research culture. What also intrigued me was the school's layout, where research and medical school facilities are integrated within the same building. Let's go explore together! Our campus tour begins with the admissions department. When I was thinking of applying to Duke NUS, one of the factors that impressed me greatly was the responsiveness and efficiency of the admissions department. They were so kind and patient with my numerous questions. The Duke NUS MD program is a four-year graduate program. Let me bring you around the facilities used by the MD program students, starting with the Clinical Performance Centre. Let's go! The Clinical Performance Centre, or CPC, on Level 3 consists of 13 simulated clinic rooms equipped with cameras and microphones, wherein students from Phases 1, 2 and 4 practice their history taking, physical examination, patient communication and procedural skills in a simulated clinical environment. Next, let's visit the simulation centres where we will see one of the simulation seats. It consists of two simulated patient rooms where students from phases 1, 2 and 4 are immersed in simulated clinical encounters using different forms of simulators such as mannequins, task trainers, machines, simulated patients or a combination of all to practice a more holistic approach to patients using all the clinical and communication skills they have learned as well as practice their clinical reasoning and approaches to treatment or management. Access to these simulation facilities where we can hone our clinical skills and gain real-world experience in a controlled and supportive environment really helped me a lot. In my second year, we also had access to a Procedural Skills Learning Laboratory, which is an innovative facility designed to provide our second and fourth year medical students with hands-on learning to practice and enhance their procedural skills. Equipped with state-of-the-art simulation part task trainers and equipment, the Procedural Skills Learning Laboratory, or PSLL, offers a safe and controlled environment for students to master at least 10 essential medical procedures. Our students can actively engage in a diverse range of activities including suturing wounds, performing intravenous catheter insertions, urinary catheterizations, and many others. Throughout their practice, they receive personalised guidance from experienced instructors who provide real-time feedback, ensuring the development of proper technique and skill proficiency. Overall, the PSLL serves as a groundbreaking supplement to our medical education curriculum, empowering students to gain confidence and competence in a wide range of procedural skills before transitioning to the clinical setting. With the CPC Simulation Suites and Procedural Skills Lab, these innovative facilities truly support the learning culture at the school. Well, that's not all. 3D printing is all the buzz now. Well, this is a new facility that supports the education, research and healthcare innovation programs at Duke NUS. Let's go! At the 3D Printing and Prototyping or 3D PP Lab, students can find various 3D printers including a Stratasys J5 MediJet that can print multicolor, multi-material and biocompatible 3D models. Models created in a 3D PP lab allow students to visualize spatial relationships of the human anatomy. Students can embark on their innovation journey with access to a range of resources such as electronics development equipment, 3D scanners, professional computer workstations, 3D modeling and segmentation software, as well as guidance and consultation.
The next stop of our campus tour is the Immersive Learning Space. Duke NUS Medical School's Immersive Learning Space, or ILS, is equipped with the latest immersive technologies to support and enhance student learning through highly interactive and engaging faculty-led and self-directed activities. The ILS houses anatomy virtual dissection tables, as well as a range of virtual and augmented reality headsets and applications. Students can manipulate, navigate and explore anatomical structures, interact with simulated patients, and participate in clinical scenarios in a safe and intuitive manner. I've always liked the immersive learning space. Beyond these facilities, the learning culture here also gives room for self-directed learning. The curriculum at Duke NUS is designed to provide an opportunity for us to become outstanding clinicians and critical thinkers. This is best exemplified in Team LEAD, which is a progressive learning pedagogy. LEAD stands for Learn, Engage, Apply and Develop. Before I joined, I heard so much about Duke NUS being a research powerhouse. I had the privilege of experiencing this firsthand as an undergraduate. Here, you can be mentored by renowned researchers and have access to world-class facilities. Let's go see the Duke NUS research facilities! Our world-class signature research programs are aligned to critical areas of public health care needs. These disease-focused, multidisciplinary programs have facilitated research discoveries that aim to improve the lives of patients in Singapore and around the world. The Duke NUS Flow Cytometry Core Facility provides researchers with cell sorting services and access to a Forteza analyzer. The cell sorter is operated by a trained staff and involves separating cells based on specific characteristics such as surface immunological markers in flow cytometry. Flow cytometry operates on the basis of fluorescence, during which cells are tagged with specific fluorescent markers or dyes to help in their identification and sorting. This allows researchers to isolate rare cell populations and obtain highly purified samples that can be used for subsequent functional studies. This core facility supports a lot of research work, providing researchers with valuable insights into cell populations, their characteristics and functional properties. Such cutting-edge technologies contribute to the advancement of scientific knowledge in Duke NUS. Each lab at Duke NUS has its own tissue culture room to work in. This is what a standard room looks like. Each tissue culture room contains the basics, such as biosafety cabinets, carbon dioxide incubators, light microscopes, centrifuges, and fridges. Some rooms also contain specialized equipment like the InQSight Live Cell Imaging and Analysis System. Here, we are able to maintain and handle cell lines and tissue cultures from humans or other animals and manipulate infection agents like viruses to perform experiments. Welcome to our Level 9 Confocal Room, where advanced imaging technology takes center stage. Here, you'll find the upright and inverted LSM710 Carl Zeiss Confocal Microscopes, which offer a range of laser lines and filters, allowing visualization of various fluorescent markers. Motorized stages enable automated scanning and the creation of detailed multi-channel images. The microscopy room provides researchers with powerful tools to investigate cellular and subcellular structures, supporting the many impactful investigations and research projects here in Duke NUS. Unique to Duke NUS is the fruit fly lab where Drosophila melanogaster are cultured and used to study their genetics and behaviour. 
Drosophila melanogaster is a small common fruit fly species found near unripe and rotting fruit. Due to its small size, ease of culture, and short generation time, geneticists have been using it for over a century. At Duke NUS, we also use transgenic mouse models to study physiology as well as pathophysiology of human diseases. These include the Behavioural Phenotyping Core, which offers various behavioural tests to assess sensory and motor abilities, cognitive function as well as anxiety or depression in mouse models, and the Cardiovascular Phenotyping Core that assists with echocardiography and hemodynamic performance assessments in mice. We are venturing into the Duke NUS Insectary Core facility where the mosquitoes are kept for research. The Aedes mosquitoes in this lab assist researchers in gaining insights into the behaviour of arboviruses such as dengue, chikungunya and zika in their natural vector. The laboratory maintains a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius and a humidity level of 80% to mimic an environment where the mosquitoes thrive in. Under the microscope, the black specks visible are mosquito larvae, which hatch in a yeast broth and are fed with diluted ground fish food mixed in water. After a span of about a week following hatching, the larvae become pupae and are subsequently relocated to a mosquito wearing cage using a pasture pipette. The pupae will emerge into adult mosquitoes after 2-3 to three days and the cage will contain a solution of 10% sucrose and water as food for the mosquitoes. At this stage, the mosquitoes will be used for experimental procedures by the insectary users. Wow, that was quite a tour of the research and medical school facilities. But beyond these, our students find solace and camaraderie in the heart of our campus, the Student Lounge. Thank you for joining us on this Duke NUS Medical School campus tour. I hope you've gained a glimpse into the remarkable facilities and opportunities that await you here. To find out more, visit our website or contact our admissions office. Hope to see you at Duke NUS soon. Bye!